Noob Review. Hello and welcome to the Avatar Connect Show from NoobReview.com. We're cunningly calling NoobReview.com's Avatar Connect Show. Luke's got some news for you. Thanks, Tom. So the first bit of news I'd like to talk about is the number one game in the UK sales chart, Deus Ex. Now, Deus Ex has managed to dethrone Zumba Fitness, which had been number one on the UK charts for a staggering ten weeks. The action RPG, which has been developed by Eidos Montreal, sold a mere 26,000 units short of outperforming the entire lifetime sales of the previous Deus Ex game within a mere two days. Now on to some 3DS news. The Ambassador program has been announced with the 10 downloadable NES titles that you can get if you were an early adopter of the Nintendo 3DS. So, if you shelled out the full price for it, as you did, Luke, I did. You can get 10 downloadable titles. I have. Do they all fit on the 3DS? Yeah, they do. It comes with a 2 gigabyte uh, memory card, and these ones, uh, all 10 games, sorry, only take up about 36 megabytes. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, go and get them now, folks. Now, actually downloading your 10 free 3DS games is actually a little bit tricky. So, we've helpfully produced this little video showing you exactly how to download all 10 games, including... <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong Jr., The Legend of Zelda, and Metroid. And finally, in your news bulletin today on NewReview.com's Avatar Connect show, we bring you news that the Zelda Skyward Sword Limited Edition bundle is coming to Europe on the 18th of November. Luke is going to tell you what you can get inside this happy little bundle. As well as a free CD featuring select orchestral arrangements of iconic music spanning the history of the franchise, customers will also receive a golden Wii remote with Motion Plus. Well, I, I say it's gold, it's actually just golden coloured rather than being made of solid gold. Uh, well, you know, you can't ask too much of these special edition bundles, can you? No official price has been announced, but uh, online retailer Zavi are accepting pre-orders for under £50. Which, quite frankly, sounds like a good deal, considering that Motion Plus remotes are at least £30 themselves on their own. Never mind golden ones. So our advice is, snap this up. Noob review. Our very own resident idiot, Adam Radcliffe, has recorded a special little video for you people on what he thought of the recent I-43 festival that he went to. Hello everyone, it's Adam Radcliffe here from the Noob Review, reporting live in 3D for your viewing pleasure. And I just wanted to tell you about the I-43 event that I went to recently. It's a gaming festival where there are over 3,000 computers in one room and over 4,000 gamers fueled entirely by energy drinks and an incalculable amount of free sweets. The point of the festival is simple, to go and prove your gaming prowess among the rest of the PC master race. If those people can even be called people that is, the more machine than they are man, kind of like my friend Jason Denson or whatever it is from Deus Ex Machinima. But anyway, I'd always thought of the console gaming and PC gaming were relatively similar in terms of demographic and culture, but no, I was very wrong. These PC gamers speak an entirely different language, and they travel from all over the globe to compete for big crash prizes. It's a serious sport, and I don't like sport, I think it's archaic and silly. I actually had to sit down for a minute and just take in the atmosphere and the smell of the arena. One of the highlights, however, of the whole affair, the big man falling off a mechanical bull, and me becoming a bone marrow donor, as well as a very intense game of foosball, which I lost. So all in all, a very interesting and fun place to be. Thanks, it's actually Adam. A few weeks ago, I was lucky enough to be invited along to Gamescom 2011, and I sat down with Ken Ralston, lead designer on Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Here's what I spoke to him about. I don't, I don't think it's time to build a role-playing game until you've got a premise that you said, oh, that's Oops. sweet, I, I, we got to do that. And uh, the premise of the game is you're the first person in history to be resurrected. And it turns out that that's kind of got some mythic res resonances in the real world, so that you know it's cool, 
And at the same time, not only are you the first person ever to be resurrected, you don't know why. And people wonder why. And it turns out that if you ever invented resurrection, people would be very interested in you. Some of them in a nice way, some of them in a way that they wanted to dismantle you for parts and see how it worked. So we create this fabulous situation of conflicts, possible conflicts, undefined conflicts, my favorite open world narrative. And at the same time, we don't define the character. We leave you the idea, was I a good man? Was I a bad man? And the mystery is, you say, I wonder if those game designers are going to tell me. Because we're prisoners of our genre, we're, we, do, we don't know to ask for more. And so I kept saying, wow, I bet you know we could go play an action game and see how much fun a game would be. But I hate action games. Always did. And it's not because they're not fun per unit time. I mean, you're doing stuff and getting excited. But they're in a rail. They're, you know, and they're also they're in a level where very often you're just trying to figure out what does the designer expect me to do here? Do I have to hit him with a hat rack or the oil-based paint can or I don't know? So you're, 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 you always feel like you're trying to figure out what the designer is doing. So I've had this what I thought to be a brilliant idea. Okay, it turns out there are four pillars of role playing. Uh, turns out Bioware accidentally seems to have done a great job with narrative, so can't go in there. And then there's uh, Bethesda, you know, they, because I've been responsible for doing some open world games. Well, they don't suck. And then there's Blizzard, who does not a particularly bad job of doing advancement and loot, you know, like compulsive stuff. But I said, okay, we can do it. We can do it in this area. And then this amazing coincidence occurs. I get to work with R.A. Salvatore, who... I'm only slightly bitter that he's a better writer than I am. And then I say, Todd McFarlane, I wonder if he would know something about animation and the theater of combat. I wonder if that might be convergent with my lust for good combat. And it turned out, shockingly, shockingly, he was good at that stuff. Uh, so it, it's a great opportunity. That's what my, that's how we have this market differentiation. It's a lot of stupid coincidences that come from my brilliant vision, of course, of knowing that we could do the combat thing. But, but I could never have done it without these visionaries. It's very hard to sell a new RPG, very hard to sell a new IP, but at least I could do that. I could make the same kind of pitch I've just made to you guys about why this guy the game is great. But it turns out I can't make that game. It had to be big, huge. And they're wonderful people. They they understand action games. But since I despise them, I couldn't possibly do that. So they, they, they took care of all that work. Ian did a wonderful job of designing systems. There's the Destiny system, which fits beautifully into the premise of our game. Uh, one of the problems is, if you're going to uh, play a role-playing game and you're going to start off as a fighter, if you don't plunge that, you very rarely get a... you're going to get a gift character if you try to put some of the other pieces in there. Okay, that would not work for us, but we really wanted to be able to do that. So that meant poor Ian had to design a game system that would not suck under those circumstances. And said, Rockla! He actually did it! Oh, oh my god! Uh, and again, it turns out if, if really good people are working with you and you're a raving lunatic, sometimes they feel obligated to do what you think ought to be done. So the Destiny system, as you were saying, is essentially a way of building your character piece by piece using little bits of character classes. And the reason that that's great is, of course, you don't have to commit yourself to a, a character in the direction, but also because we have such a seductive combat system and it works in all the different areas, we expect, for example, there'll be some of you who are hardcore, the, you like to play a fighter because it's simple. Bang, 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 repeat. And by the way, that's great. I, I, I play that sometimes. But in this case, what, you'll be doing this, and then you'll find out that a magic user, when he pushes the uh, uh, dodge button, he teleports behind his enemy. And then there's that special moment of sense of betrayal. You mean, I can't do that as a fighter? And then it weakens you. It weakens you. You're seduced to the, to the dark side to do magic, which is evil. All magic is evil, obviously. So 
that, and that's the whole idea. Because you begin to discover how much fun the other little bits are, we want you to constantly, when it gets to be level up time, in agony, in agony saying, I can't stand not choosing these other cool little bits. So do you see what you've done as the future of RPGs? And do you think that a lot of other companies are going to be copying huh. what you've done? Yes, because I'm so modest and self-effacing, yes, I do believe everyone will follow in my tracks. And I say that only vaguely ironically. I, I actually do think that when people say, you know, he took a chance, you know, he put a lot of action elements in there, and yet he was not dragged behind pickup trucks by his fans, they'll say, you know, it is fun. It's a game time. It's time for Luke's video of the week. What video are you choosing this week, Luke? Well, today I'm going to show off a highlight reel from a, a special event that took place at Gamescom between legendary Street Fighter producer Yoshinori Ono and the Tekken producer Katsuhiro Harada. Uh, it was basically a, uh, an unconventional battle between the two to see which fighting franchise would be the greatest. So... <laughs> It's quite a long video, but I've edited it down to show the key highlights, so please watch and uh, enjoy. Just here to keep it a fair fight and may the best Capcom win. Awesome video. That about does it for this week on NewReview.com's Avatar Connect show. I've been Tom Wallace. And I've been Luke Mears. And we'll be back same time next time on Avatar Connect show for NewReview.com. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you for playing. Presented by Noob Review.